dude, you suck at this game. <laughs> Whatever, man. Hey, welcome everybody to part two of Formula Zero. I am your thrice failed commentarian, Sweet Victory. We're going to try to record this again. I am in the future of when I actually recorded this. For some reason, Audacity is being a giant jerk today. That being said, welcome to Red Canyon. Red Canyon th thrice as well. The three or two, I actually completely missed it. So, Red Canyon. If you'll notice, I just noticed this, but if you look at the mountains in the background, they look a lot like the mountains from Big Blue, which makes me think that maybe they take place on the same planet or in a different time. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's the same planet, guys. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell. Anyways, commentary on this track. Pretty nice. Like the jumps, like the curves, like the turns. So pretty nice. Um, I think there's a little bit of um, inspiration from the other uh, F-Zero tracks, the other big other uh, Red Canyons. So I could say for a fact that I think they're paying well homage of this. Anyways, so I have a little story to tell, a story time to see pictures. We watched me zip around the track with relative ease. So I got a car recently, and I don't know if it's just me. But I have really bad luck with things that I just get going wrong, like super early after getting having gotten the thing. You know what I mean? Like, uh, for example, I got a PS3, and I was really excited because I got it because ASOS, aka Alan, told me to. He introduced me to Little Big Planet, and I was hooked ever since. Uh, he is responsible for a lot of the purchases I make because I'm just like, oh shit, yeah, PS3. Anyway, after having it only for about a month, it decides to eat my disc, and I have to send it back to the factory. That was fun. But that's what I'm saying. Stuff like that. Like, I had my... Com this computer was only about two weeks old before it had its first blue screen. It was just like... I keep having weird problems. Weird off-the-cuff problems. Like, I, I modded my PS2 and... Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong, even though I did everything correctly. Anyway, I digress. But, um, I don't know, maybe maybe it's just, it's something you have to do in order for it to be yours. You know, you have to have that one mistake happen. Anyway. So the first instance of this wasn't really my fault, but after having the car for only a week, I almost wrecked it, because somebody pulled out in front of me. I was on the inside lane going on a highway at about 40 miles an hour. When somebody who was uh, coming off the right of the road on another road, an intersecting road, that was close. Um, you gotta hope this video syncs up with my audio, otherwise you won't understand why I said that was close. I almost jumped off the track there. Anyway, I digress once again. That's what I do. That's what I do. Anyway, so, I came real close to death there. That guy did, really, because he was going to pull out. I was going to hit him right in the driver's side and order game over. Um... But I managed to, s to swerve and dodge that. I'm like, that would be just wonderful. You know, I kill somebody and I wreck my car all within a week of owning the damn thing. I just got the thing loaned out. I got the insurance put on it. You know, that was my scare. Everyone has to have their scare, you know. Um, and then, just recently, it's Thursday. Um, something else happened. Yeah, I won. Um, it rained. It rained a lot where I live. It rained so much that it flooded pretty much all the streets in town. Um... Nothing was under, not underwater at some point. I was going to pick up my fiance at work. I was driving into town. Uh, you couldn't see 10 feet in front of you. Uh, you, all the lights were out. There were no lights running. There were no lights in any of the businesses. You know, things were flying across. I mean, the winds were going at like 60 miles an hour. Sheer sideways rain fucking just, we got an inch of rain in five minutes. No, we got five inches of rain in one hour. Ice corrected myself there. Also, silence is green? I kind of like it. It's a minty, refreshing <laughs> take on it. <laughs> but to be honest, it kind of reminds me of like, they're taking Port Town and then taking silence and then mixing them together. But I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Anyway, um, so it was raining a lot. And obviously when I picked up my fiance, I realized that uh, getting home was going to be not an easy endeavor. Uh, so, 
we set out, and I quickly realized how bad things are getting, because any way you turn, there's a flood. I mean, that the road was just washed out. So I had to back up and move two or three times, and what I should have done was heeded my fiance's advice, which was to go back south and then jump back on a highway, and then run down to another highway, which are generally better irrigated than other roads. Hopefully, if the drainage is slightly better, one would think. But, being an idiot, I decided to go down this other side road, and that has a bridge, bridge at the end of it, and I don't know why. My brain was thinking, well, since there's a bridge, there's a place for the water to go. Ergo, there won't be any, or much water on the road, right? <laughs> oh, silly me. So, I drive down there, and it's raining real hard. And I'm, you can see in front of me that there are cars in front of me that are turning around. And I'm thinking, well, oh, that's fine. They're turning around before the bridge, so that must mean the bridge is out so much for that idea. About this time, about the time I'm thinking this, I hit a pond. Like, a pond has arisen from from the depths of water. Because you know that old adage, I mean, it's not an adage, but a lot of people tell you whenever you're driving, drivers that will tell you this, whatever you see still water, like water not moving on the road, that typically means that there's a lot of water there. <laughs> and I couldn't tell because it was raining. So everything looked still to me. It looked like rain. It looked, didn't look that deep at all. But then I ran into it and I ended up stalling the engine. So, yeah. It wasn't great. I floated along there. My engine stalled. I had a small moment of panic. A city worker drove by us. Made sure we were okay. Just kidding. He just completely ignored us. Uh, which is fine. I wouldn't have bothered anyway. Right? Anyway, so as we're about, so as soon as he drives off, we're getting ready to get out of the car and push it out. Some lady walks into the water and proceeds to tell me, no, I'm not a mechanic. Okay, I'm not a mechanic. I don't know a whole lot about cars. But I don't know a whole lot. I'm not, I'm not a pyrotechnic either. But she proceeds to tell us that we need to get out of the vehicle due to the fact that water is going into the exhaust and the car will catch on fire. Well... I don't know if she knew the car wasn't running, and not to mention, I'm trying to think. In what instance would water catch something on fire? Electrical, perhaps? I don't know. Anyway, it baffled me, and after that, it was like a switch turned off. It was like she was telling you something, and then like her face went blank, and then she went back to her. It was the weirdest thing. It was like, this is what I was programmed to say. Uh, my main uh, objective has been completed, protocol restored to fault, and then like she turned around and just disappeared. Well, she went to a car, like across the street somewhere, and I will say she did look a little bit methy, a little bit crystal methany. So I'm gonna take everything that this woman is telling me with a with a grain of meth. Uh, anyways, I digress. So we get pushed out of the car, and I tried I pushed it out of the car. Whoa, I pushed it out of the water. It is just floating pretty good. Um, I push it out of the water, I try to start it, nothing happens. Crap. I ruined my engine. Try it again. Car starts. Barely. It starts. It starts hiccuping a lot. I kind of know why. So I drive it home. It gets home by some miracle of magic, or of God, or somebody, or being, whatever. I got very, very lucky. Your car opened the air intake. There was quite a bit of water in there. Soaked it out, let it dry, bought a new air filter, slapped it in there, because the one that was in there obviously was destroyed. And, uh, by some dumb luck, the car actually started back up and isn't really having any issues, but, um, I probably still want to get the transmission looked at. But, yeah, that was my Thursday. Obviously, it wasn't the best. I, I just have the worst luck. And, uh, thankfully, the only thing that came out of it that was bad is now my car smells like death. So, well, not death, but it smells like, you know, dirty dishwater. Also, I'm getting ready to lap one of the players. I've never done that at any one of these EF Zero map I played on here, any EF Zero track on this game. Never actually lapped one of the players, but I actually succeeded in doing it. Also, the road map looks like Clippy got shot in the face. That's how. This is the way I could describe it. Anyways, I'm currently taking my victory rap, lap, rap, my victory rap around the track. Super excited. I like. I like this minty fresh silence I like it you, you don't need much to please me really with games like this I'm always I'm into F-Zero because you know it's a game 
that I grew up with, and it's nostalgic to me because this is one of the only games that my mom ever played with me when I was a kid. And we played Mario Paint, I think, and Bubsy on uh, Sega Genesis, which a lot of people would be like, Bubsy, what? That's stupid. That sucks. This is the worst game ever. Okay. Yes, it is, but I'd still play it. I'd still play it. I like Bubsy. Bubsy 2, on the other hand, can go die. Uh, you might have seen my Friday Finds on that, and uh, really, if I didn't know it was possible to take acid, somehow synthesize it into data form, and then produce a game on it. Anyways, let's go ahead and start Queen's Cup, the Queen's League. Oh yeah, let's do the Queen's League. Hmm. Now, Big Blue. Oh, see, now look at the mountains. The same as Red Canyon, only it has no green on it. It has no green in the Red Canyon version. You can't sit there and tell me not. And those trees are there, but they had the dead trees. I am actually starting to believe that this is the same, like it's the same planet. I'm going to convince myself. And again, uh, this game seems to suffer from claustrophobia on the start line, if you haven't noticed, because everyone wants to rub up against me like a cat, rubbing their head up against your leg and then curling their tail up your pants. They have a tail. Our cat doesn't have a tail, but don't, don't, don't make fun of him for him. He's pretty sensitive about this. I like to see it. This map looks like, uh, again, kind of looks like Clippy got kind of smashed, uh, but I like it because it's big blue, and I'm a sucker for all things F Zero. Uh, I have played a few of the ROM hacks, and I think this one's done something right. Uh, that. I, I had a problem with a lot of the other ROM hacks. I don't know how many other people out there have played a lot of ROM hacks, but the ones I've played have a bad tendency of, like, introducing precision jumping. Uh, I don't know what uh, sort of idea, why this idea came up, but I played a lot of ROM hacks that require you to, like, maximize your speed before you get, just, like, before you make this 90-degree turn and then jump. It's really stupid and, and really annoying. I prefer my f games like this. Not hard, you know, but not boring either. They're fun. It's just another set of F-Zero tracks that I didn't have before. And that's all it takes. That's all it takes to appease me. Sure, the some of the track designs obviously aren't very... Oops, uh, I'm pausing it to probably let the cat out, speak of which. I have to guess since this is in post-record. But I'm, that's probably when that happened. Um, anyway. Or my earbud fell out of my ear. That kept happening, too. My left ear refuses all things audio uh, input. Also, look at this energy strip. Look how small it is. To contact my congressman and tell him about that. This is ridiculous. This energy strip is not sufficient to repair my space vehicle. Please, I pay good tax money to have that crazy Technicolor energy strip placed on that road. Okay, it doesn't. Co it costs so much money in maintenance to keep that thing up and running. And you're gonna just just be useless. It's useless. It's nothing I can work with. I... Shame, shame. Anyway, so... Anyway, so like I, like I said, the track layout is pretty simple. All these track layouts have been pretty simple thus far. And it doesn't bother me whatsoever. I like stuff like this. I don't want things to be overly difficult. I like just a simple romp through the old uh, forest woods. Um, if uh, Does romp mean sex? Whatever. It works on both levels. I, I would fuck up to it. Uh, if I was, um, bit. What? I don't know what I'm saying. Anyways. <laughs> Gotta keep talking till, till the, uh, till the, um, episode ends. But I mean, like, the only difficult part about it is the last turn, which I think is most appropriate. But anyways. Yay! That's the first track of Queen's League done. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. We'll come back, we'll continue the Queen's League. And hopefully the audio won't crash this time. For God's sakes. But anyways, um, I will see you guys later. Please work, Audacity.